it's the resistance to pain that causes more pain. Oh yeah. So like fighting against pain or fighting against hardship, resisting pain is actually the thing that's causing you the most pain. It's not the pain itself. Wow. Does that make sense? In many cases, I, I tell people this all the time, you don't, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> you don't have to win them all, but you better fight them. I wonder if the doctor would let me get no surgery without any, any painkillers <laughs> or without putting me under. And if I could like do an experiment of like having him re-break my nose and like feel no, the whole pain man. of it. <laughs> I'm not being masochistic. Different, different. I just want to like feel that depth of pain to understand like what it's like. So Diego grabs this bowl that was, that was housing the meat, holding the meat. Just drinks the blood, man. Boom, boom, boom. Quick, have just some. drinks. Quick, you gotta eat it. Blood. Yeah, dude, just straight drinks it, eats it. And, what did uh, you do? What's up, guys? Welcome to the Anti Fragile Podcast. Uh, this is Hayden. I'm Hayden Chap. Um, Rich is my co-host. And uh, it's an awesome episode today. I want you guys just to like and subscribe if you actually like the episode. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, one thing that I wanted to do this week that I thought would be kind of cool is to go onto the YouTube act, the episode for YouTube and comment something that you're grateful for. Um, this is the, the holiday season and um, you know, the whole podcast, we were actually talking a lot about adversity and what what it helps people become like how adversity helps shape and form you into the person that is the best version of yourself and uh, what it means to actually like embrace adversity and go through it and there's no better way to like handle that type of stuff than to um, express gratitude so that's the challenge for this week is to just comment something on the youtube video of the this episode of the podcast um, something that you're grateful for and then just like and follow us on any of the channels that we're on. And uh, I honestly think you guys are going to really love the episode. So we'll see you guys on the other side. Do you know how um, <clears throat> you probably, I'm same. talking to the wrong person here about sugar, but uh, you know how like <laughs> people all got to taste the same. People like <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed. But, you know, but for real though, like <laughs> when people eat Skittles, is this not true? If you eat Skittles, don't you always have your favorite color of Skittle? Does right? anybody agree with that? Yeah, you always have your favorite color of Skittle. You don't? You just eat them all? No. no. But like Starburst. They're not the same thing. But okay. But so like Starburst though. If you have Starburst, Starburst you do not have different. Yeah. you have this your special like your favorite flavor of Starburst, right? Like yeah. which ones do you hate? The yellow ones. No, the yellow ones are you the worst. You don't like red, huh? Yeah, the yellow ones are the worst. Wow. Morgan probably takes all the yellow and like puts them in together in like a fistful and like yeah. <laughs> so that's the same idea with this the sour patch kids is uh the ever you know everyone has their favorite flavor of sour patch kid and this tastes exactly like that one flavor sometimes uh my wife will ask me like you know in in when you're making movies you sometimes you have a trailer right and in there they'll, they'll <laughs> yeah. ask you kind of what kind of things you want and never have have i ever been high enough where they're like oh like hey this chefs in charge are going to help you out or whatever. Like Mark Wahlberg, does he have, does it, he have a chef on set? I would imagine so, right? Yeah. I mean, he's got a bunch. I mean, <clears throat> speaking of which, I'll, we'll I tell, I'll tell a story, story about this. About right? Mark Wahlberg. This is a great story about him. Or maybe not. I don't know what people will think. It's kind of interesting. I'm a little I'm a little worried about this one, but I, I think we'll just go for it. Dude. Yeah, Swing why not? We're, we're already in. Who cares? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but my wife sometimes asks me, if you could have anything in your tray, like what would you pick? And Dude, I'm all about peeled grapes. Frozen peeled grapes. That's what I would peeled choose. Peeled grapes? Uh, yeah, I don't like the skin. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Frozen <laughs> peeled that's how grapes. I would want. That's what I would want. What yeah. kind of life do you have to live to know that you would like peeled grapes, dude? Try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> but try okay, it, so you don't like the skin, right? <laughs> no. How did you get to the point to where you're like, I love grapes so much that I would peel the skin off to still eat them? Dude, I'm not a big eater. So I think weird. eating is such a chore, right? Oh, like, I, have, I think it's just such dude, a waste of time. So I hate it. I feel like a robot. Probably my first, second. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it, dude. Right now, I'm, I'm eating one meal a day right now. And 
<laughs> still one meal. This was like when we first started. You, when you were first coaching me, you, you were like, "You have to eat more." Hated. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta feed your, you gotta feed yourself, man, <laughs> dude. Well, this is like the argument I make to like my the guys who are like, "How do you keep on muscle mass with with eating as little as you do?" Yeah, I'm like, well, if you think about it, like from just evolution, uh, if you're like a caveman on a hunt, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Your body, you're not gonna okay. be. You didn't take like a like. You didn't take any grapes with you for like snacks on the way. Like, what <laughs> you if you didn't have them? You know, <laughs> Five, and they probably them along the way. grapes either. But but if you were going like for a long period of time, you wouldn't have that much food to carry with you. So your body is gonna prioritize keeping muscle mass for strength and energy over fat. That's why ketosis starts to eat away fat in layman's terms, I guess. Yeah. So that's why fasting preserves your muscle mass. And why I don't lose muscle mass when I'm fasting because even dude, I've been doing this for like months and months. Yeah. And I just, I'll, I'm the same. I stay within the same 10 pounds of weight, depending on how hard I'm lifting. Um, but that's, that's where my guy's like, wild. yeah, it just goes against everything I know about like bodybuilding and like six meals a day and like just yeah. eating as much protein as possible. I'm like, bro, hmm. evolution has been around a lot longer than bodybuilding has. Yeah. So, well, I say do what works. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You just to figure if it works, okay, for you, bro. I'm no expert. If it works I for you, then do it, right? Like, yeah. I'm all about it. Um, that's funny. That's wild. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some interesting stories with diets, right? Some wild wild things people have. What's the craziest diet you ever heard? Oh, well, I got to tell you first. I'll, I have that and answer that, but I have to tell you a story about like one of my first memories of you. So, okay. I was in high school getting ready to graduate and i was training i was training with you and your fighter the fighter group they weren't your fighters right you were just training with that group for strength yeah. and conditioning yep so i was training with you guys for strength and conditioning um because i was getting ready to go play college football and um after you and i got to know each other a little bit and uh after training a few times together i like was on i was out, out going out the door to find fitness and you're like hey what type of protein are you taking or something and then you were yeah. telling me about yours like this is like the best tasting protein ever yeah. so you're like come get some from my house on the way home so i stopped by and you gave me like a protein drink yeah and then you started to, to remember berry greens bro. you're gonna love berry greens, <laughs> berry greens. Dude, I'll still, I'll still this, is right this, this is like my eyes were opened bro you're like you're like hey here this you also need to add this in there and yeah. you took like this big old scoop of like <laughs> like it looks like athletic greens like yeah. those ground up greens yeah. you know and you just shove that Dude, in there so good huh? and then <laughs> on top of that you're like uh, i was like why why do you drink that and you're like oh it has all these superfoods in it and the nutrients and like i could tell you were like all about that you know? <laughs> Dude, and then yeah. you're like oh and watch this one so then you go over to the fridge and you open up the fridge and you're like and you got to eat what? this too and it was garlic filled, oh so garlic filled olives bro <laughs> so good right <laughs> Dude, I was well, like, hold on is he, like, is he telling is right world? now the craziest things the craziest diet is my diet sorry no that's not <laughs> i just had to tell a story before we moved on because that was the first thing i remember of you is uh so is, good is drinking is berry greens and intact protein and then that intact protein was good too right yeah dude. i would eat Still, garlic stuffed olives right now i can go for that it's like just, it's the superfood though right like your uh superfood combo is that why you actually no that's exactly what you told me i, I believed I it whatever that. I it was i'm that. certain that i believed it at the <laughs> you time did. you did <laughs> although i don't know if i your still believe are it, subject to change but though. i know for certain that i believed it at that time and i would eat it now i think it, that kind of thing is delicious I, so i would add that too i would say i want that in my trailer garlic stuffed olives <laughs> uh peeled grapes and also pickle juice and pickle juice and pickle juice yeah that's it's just, a, ran, that's just the most random juice, right what would you put in yours in my trailer yeah i would probably have no food until 7 p.m <laughs> every day morgan's like hey, you want, are you want to go get you something to eat I'm like no nah, i'm good really and i won't eat till much much later um probably bro you know what i'm like obsessed with right now is i can't and this is also morgan's fault is acai bowls thanks morgan acai bowls Except for Why I'm, like, I'm on kind of like a, like the down. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know, dude, I get like obsessive with about food and I'll eat the same food every yeah. day and then I'll get sick of it and then never eat it again. Huh. Like I did, I went on a cheesecake kick like a couple oh, of years man, ago. Cheesecake's good. I literally would order cheesecake <laughs> for lunch and dinner dude. via DoorDash. 
like hmm. for like probably four or five weeks straight. What dude. kind? What did you put anything on it? It's just plain New York cheesecake. I mean, at first when you go down the cheesecake rabbit hole, you start with plain cheesecake, right? Like plain cheesecake, strawberry. Sometimes maybe, a little, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> yeah. maybe, sometimes maybe a little bit of like sauce on it. But then that gets old. But there's so many different types of cheesecake, dude. You can there's it's like endless types of cheesecake. So. <laughs> Every type of GTA. But I, that's this is a, the best right show now, ever right now. Right now for me, acai bowls. Yeah. Acai bowls. Because I'm convincing myself that it's somewhat healthy, even though like I'm pretty sure there's probably frozen yogurt in the ones that I eat. <laughs> Actual ice cream, bro. <laughs> it's just ice cream. So ice cream. Just red ice cream. So and some uh, <laughs> one year down at Greg Jackson's, right? Uh I mean you have the best fighters in the world. And nowadays, I mean, they're still up there. But uh yeah. Back then it was it was mecca mecca for mecca for athletes, right? Mm-hmm. And Diego Sanchez, uh, is kind of the pioneer of MMA in Albuquerque in a lot of ways. There was a couple before him, but really Diego, when he went and did the Ultimate Fighter, like it was, it really changed the game. Really, and even in my eyes, I felt like MMA was like truly at the beginning. I remember thinking like, this is dumb. Mm-hmm. This doesn't make any sense. Like wrecking your body. I mean, <laughs> cauliflower ear. Like I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. Because like you're way it. past jits at that point, right? Like, dude, I wasn't even into it. I'm like, I don't even want to do that kind yeah. of thing. Like this is wild. Anyhow, he he went on and he did uh, Ultimate Fighter One, and he's Ultimate Fighter One champion, mm-hmm. right? And he's a good friend of mine. I don't talk to him much nowadays, um, although he would be a f- great person to have on. Diego but uh Sanchez, talking about crazy foods one year anyhow talking about <laughs> crazy foods he's tried the craziest diets i've ever seen and one of the things like i even remember greg jackson would say like when he when this guy believes something like he believes it right <laughs> like, and i do too and so do you but like i mean this guy's on another <laughs> level of belief like right? irrational belief. like irrational dude there's no stopping him right okay and this is this is uh this is a like a superpower he has, right? <laughs> Anyhow, even Greg Jackson himself, like the the master of martial arts, writes like, dude, if Diego says, I'll try it once. Like anything <laughs> Diego says, I'll try. Okay. And they, I mean, years ago, he was like, Rich, um, he was on this kick. He's like, Rich, I- I'm eating ostrich meat. Like <laughs> ostrich meat. I'm like, ostrich meat. He's like, meat. dude, ostrich meat's rated the best meat in the whole world. Like, you gotta try this ostrich meat. I'm like, all right, I'll try some, I'll try some ostrich meat, like <laughs> okay. whatever. He's like, but it's expensive. I'm like, all right, cool. Okay. So we go to, I don't know, Whole Foods at the time. And, uh, you know, it's like a hundred dollars for a little bit of this ostrich meat. But, <laughs> but then he's like, uh, but you got to eat it raw. <laughs> oh, geez. He's like raw. You probably had a good raw. reason why to not cook it, right? Totally, totally. <laughs> gold, golden reason why to not cook it. I don't really remember why it wasn't to cook it. But the the thing was, oh, well, actually, I know why it wasn't. It's because, like, you're saying, like, hey, dude, back in the day, we're, I mean, we're hunters, right? But, <laughs> but you got to eat this meat raw like a tiger, right? Like, you got to be, this is going to wring out your real manhood. Anyhow, long story short, we pick up this meat. We go to his parents' house. And uh, his dad was there. And his dad's like, now nah, you guys are going to cook that meat. Like, you're not, you're not <laughs> eating that meat raw. No way. And I'm kind of like, I don't really know what to say here. Like, whatever. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I'm like, oh, I'll give it a try. Either way, I'll try it. And uh, his dad's like, no, you're cooking. You're cooking that meat, man. So he's like, he starts the grill in the back. And that was a whole, whole ordeal as well. But he gets the, gets the meat uh, cooking on this grill. And we, we came to the decision. Actually, him and his dad came to this. Like, we're going to cook this meat one, one minute on each side only. Just that's it. One minute. That was their compromise. That was the compromise, <laughs> right? And, I, and I'm here. I, I'm just, just, like, whatever. just like, whatever, whatever you guys say. But to eat this massive bird. I'm like, whatever. I don't even eat red meat. I'm like, whatever. I'll do it because Diego says to do it, right? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so he's cooking this this meat on the on the grill. And uh, one side, he's timing it right, putting it in this bowl. And the bowl's getting blood on the bottom of it. Like, yeah, this meat is raw. So he's running it into the house. And as he's running into his house, his dad's in the kitchen and his dad has a stove on and his dad's sneaking the pieces of meat <laughs> on the stove, right? Sneaking it, putting it onto the stove. And uh, in this process, Diego notices that his dad's doing that. And he's like, no, what are you doing, dad? Like, that's the, that's the real nutrients. Like, that's what's going to make us strong. And his dad's like, 
he, he didn't care, right? So Diego grabs this bowl that was that was housing the meat, holding the meat, and he just drinks the blood, man. Boom, boom, boom. He's like, quick, have just some. drinks quick, the you gotta eat it. Blood. Yeah, dude, just straight drinks it, eats it. And what did uh, you do? I don't think that I drank the blood, <laughs> dude. dude. Did you eat the meat I, though? I remember Even eating the meat. Was, uh, I don't remember. Raw? I don't remember like thinking that it tasted all that great or all that bad either. Um, but I did eat the meat, and uh, I'm sure that I felt some sort of adrenaline <laughs> afterwards. Probably just because that was the feel. Of some like, super dude, ostrich strength. Yeah, this is gonna work. But that was years ago, man. He he was on the kick of like trying new things long before and if he said to do it you you tried it man you were like all right i'll give it a that's shot that's wild because 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 i've bunch seen of people it, with I, jackson's do it uh i don't know that a bunch of me i don't think anybody probably have <laughs> only but like i remember this guy would open up his bag man they would just be full of different supplements he's probably the one who got me on the supplement like kick of like really? all right try different things try this try that so that's what i tried to do Dude. tried to do I'm all about that. I've been thinking about that a lot. I'm going to um, start getting my blood work done regularly and see what, where like I'm deficient in what nutrients and just like base my supplement routine off of how, the actual the data. I have this idea. I have this going, <clears throat> this conversation in my head sometimes because I know some people who are like, dude, injuries are all mental. Like actually let's take a, we'll take one for, for instance, like back injuries, uh, this right? This is going to be an interesting conversation. Uh, yeah. I, I know like. somebody who's like, dude, back injuries totally, they're, I read this book and they're totally not, they're not even real. Like they're not, like, they're like, they're not real. So my x-ray with discs <laughs> Dude, like this big, that's totally, not real. He's like totally not real. Like it's <laughs> phantom, like almost like phantom pain. Right. And I'm a believer in this kind of thing too. Right. Of like the power of the mind. Sure. Sure. So like, I, I want to hear people and I want to hear, read these books. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let me know what you think. Yeah. But like, with that said, th I know that there's certain injuries that like, dude, they know like can't heal, right? Like one year mm. in ADCC, I uh, tore my meniscus, right? And my wife works in the medical field. She's like, here's the thing. Within, if that th thing doesn't start to heal within like 30 days, you know it will never heal. Like wow. you'll have to have surgery. And like to the, to the day almost like it started to heal after like 30 days. Really? Yeah, and I was like, cool. Like, but I also felt like, no, that was because I did it in my mind, right? Like, oh, I interesting. In my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, about three <clears throat> years ago, I had got a hernia, right? And I'm um, like, it was after so my, like, after uh, my in your abdominal. Like yeah, I hernia? got a tear in, in in my abdominal wall, right? And my guts yep. were popping out. And I'd remembered like, okay, my my uh, meniscus, like, no, dude, I can, I I believe in the power of of my mind, right? Yeah. So I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm gonna look up the surgery. Like, I want to see it so clearly in my mind, and this thing's gonna heal. Like, I know it's gonna heal, right? She's like, I asked my wife, she's like, no, nah, that doesn't really happen with with uh, hernias. Like, maybe it with a kid, but chances are, like very very rare and i'm like oh, cool i'm very rare like i'm down <laughs> with good. that right bro i like those Dude. odds so i literally this is crazy i made my own like uh my own like uh wrap okay and, like this pad that would like keep the the guts inside of me because they, they would pop out when you work out right sure yeah <laughs> like you'd sit down <laughs> and you got to start popping out how I'm big like, was it big the pad you no know, the like, hernia dude yeah it was it's pretty, pretty I mean, my guts were popping out right like <laughs> so i'm like i've never heard I'm like hernia. no biggie described in that fashion dude i'm like no biggie i i believe in my mind so much like my subconscious is gonna heal this and i'm gonna watch the surgery before bed and like i'm gonna rehearse this healing in my mind Dude, I tried this every single night with it, as much belief <laughs> as I could muster, right? Every, for a year straight. And it didn't heal, bro. <laughs> it didn't, didn't heal. I had to have surgery. You had to have surgery. <laughs> I had to have surgery. It didn't heal. How, how'd, you, Dude, how'd you feel about that? Dude, well, that's what so that like brings uh, me. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm like talking to you about the first time you realized santa claus wasn't real. dude i'm so yeah i still am a little bit disappointed yeah absolutely uh that's the truth <laughs> so so, so that brings me back to the back right so like Ugh. i'm talking to this guy's like dude it's all it's none of it's real right and i've had back surgery l4 l5 drilled into my spine into my spinal canal right now you know like my disc 
is so bold. My disc is fragmented, right? Mm. In L4, L5. I've shown you the, the MRI. Yeah, like bad. my spinal canal is totally, sh- I, 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 in talking to the doctors, like my leg is, my left leg, I, they don't even really know what's going on because it's so messed up, right? Mm. Um, and uh, and uh, I believe still that like I can heal it with my mind. And it's the last time I had an x-ray was probably last year around this time. Uh, no, it's probably been a year and a half. Hmm. So, uh, and I'll send you the, the MRI. We'll post it here. It'll be, the, it'll be interesting. From the last time? From the last time I Dang. got it. Um, And it's totally fragmented. It's like crushing my spinal canal. Should be in a lot more pain. But for the last, you know, year and a half in my mind, I'm like, I, I can get over this. I can rehearse this. I can get through this. And all the time, you know, like if I got to do a stunt, I, I make it happen. Like I'm going to move the way I need to move. I'm going to walk the way I need to walk. But for the most part, every day, I feel like I do have some sort of back pain. Dude, so, that's interesting. And, and I would say, like, I guess I just kind of am used to it to uh, that's a sense a, as well. Sorry, I, ju- I actually jumped ahead in what I was thinking when I said that's interesting. Because what Dude. I was thinking is, like, how do you deal with the... Yeah, I, I, sorry, I, this is probably more <laughs> of a topic on, like, what's what's the meaning of pain, pain yeah. physical pain? Like, why does it exist and how do you actually manage it? But that... um. Yeah, what do you do with that? So, like, I read different books. Uh, my wife, my wife, of course, works in the medical field, and she did a Harvard Medical Conference not too long ago, and like got some book references for me. And uh, so, I've kind of been following like different plans, and I and my biggest problem is when I commit to like uh, therapy because I've done therapy, I do rehab on it as well. Right. Even once when I was doing rehab, he's like, "Man, you're really, really messed up. Like, you probably <laughs> gonna have to have surgery ooh. again." Yeah. <laughs> But um, <clears throat> I just believe that I can get over this, right? And it's like the hernia thing all over again, but I'm still like, no, I, dude, I believe it. So I, I would like to bring that up with you. Like, what is your opinion on the power of the mind? Like, can you heal, say, like a broken bone? Hmm. Or can you heal your, uh, a ruptured disc? Or like, let's start with this. What's the worst injury you've ever had? Uh. <laughs> Dude, my really morbid mind right now, like sarcastically said, depression. Right when I said that, <laughs> oh, shoot, oh, shoot. <laughs> well, well, is that dude? I don't want to even want to mess with that one. <laughs> Let's say physical. Oh, dude, physical. I used to have a. I used to have, one of my companions in my in my mission when I serve a mission for a church in Argentina. We whenever we were going through a tough time. He was from Brazil. I'm from America, and we're in Argentina, freaking Tina, dude. Like walking around, <laughs> t- talking to people who we have no idea. Like, like we did not grow up in their culture, right? Okay. So funny story. I remember this one time we walk around this corner, and uh, there's these guys on the side of the street. Dirt roads everywhere. We get we would get guns pulled on us all the time, like just on back streets, like right off the main roads. Okay. And uh, there's these this group of like young men that are all sitting on the side of the road talking. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, let's just go talk to them about God, right? So we, <laughs> of course, we start, of course, yeah, <laughs> we'll be fine. Yeah. And there's nothing crazy happened here, but we we go to talk to them, and I've I had been there for almost a year, over a year and a half, and I was mm-hmm. perfectly fluent in Spanish, but I was perfectly fluent in Argentinian Spanish. So like, yeah, I look kind of like people from Argentina, dark hair, like a little bit taller, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. somewhat yeah. European. So like I, I knew Spanish. I was, I could speak with anyone. Start talking to these guys. And I'm like, I start talking to this guy. I'm like, Hey man, what's your name? Where are you from? You know, what are you guys up to? <laughs> and he just looks at me like with this blank stare. And he's like, I'm like, there's no way this guy understands what I'm saying. So I say it again. I'm like, Hey man, how's it going? What are you guys up to? Where are you guys from? And he just keeps looking at me like this blank stare. Like, what he's like squints his eyes a little bit right and i look over to my companion i'm like bro am i speaking the right language here like i swear i know spanish and uh he starts my companion starts dying laughing and he's like oh he goes dude they don't speak spanish either they're no. from uh they're from um freak what is that uruguay paraguay they're oh, yeah, from yeah. paraguay and they speak guarani so they don't understand what you're saying either no he's just way. dying laughing so he just lets me like go on and on and like they don't even understand a word i'm saying <clears throat> anyway bro but he That's used to say funny. whenever we'd go through a hard time that this guy he's this is happy-go-lucky ex uh he was an ex professional soccer player who played on ronaldinho's no way uh, feeder team in wow. Argentina, flamengo or maybe ronaldo 
No, Ronaldinho's feeder team, Flamengo. Wow, how cool is that? But just super happy, dude. Um, big, big Brazilian guy. And he used to say, uh, we laugh so we don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever we'd go through our time, he would just like laugh about it and be like, Elder, I just have to laugh so I don't cry. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. <laughs> I have a quote similar to that where I say, uh, in time, like looking back, it'll be funny, right? And I say, why, why, why wait? Why wait? That's why, like, why wait? It's like, it's like so, so when you said that, you're like, what's the worst injury you've ever had? I'm like, depression. Depression. So Not do you believe, it, I actually do you believe that, that, that uh, injuries can be healed, um, can with, be healed with your mind? I even By remember, the way, worst, worst actual physical injury was it broke my femur. You broke when I was femur. When I was like three years old. Yeah. What? Did, oh, I, I guess we don't know what they would do for that. So like I even remember being a child, right? And being like, isn't it weird? I re remember wondering like, why would they put a cast on something? Like, why would you not use something thinking that like, isn't your body know how to heal things like that? Like, wouldn't your body right. know what to do in that scenario? <clears throat> and now I know, of course, they like they got to place that bone so it heals properly together. Right. But like, do you believe that your mind can heal injuries yeah so for me like the answer would be yes hmm. but nuanced yes yeah um and funny enough like let's let's say like take uh, a um like a mental illness for example or like depression for example mm -hmm. for example because i actually actively work on this myself like my hereditarily or from a hereditary standpoint um both sides of my family have clinical depression like um consistently now i have my own views on like probably why that's the case but i definitely think that there's some sort of genetic disposition in my family for that okay <clears throat> whether that's learned from behavior because of certain attributes of my family like over time oh yeah which is maybe is an interesting discussion or whether it's actually some sort of um you know actual formation of my brain in a way that makes their chemical imbalances how I definitely have like um, MDD in my family and I personally have it as well. And I've never taken medication for it and I don't judge people that do. I think it's, there's a definitely a place for that. But if I were to just to say, Hey, if I go home every night before I go to bed and I think about my mind being healed in a way that I no longer ever like even have the urge for like to be in a depressed state. Yeah. <clears throat> I just don't know that practically speaking, that would actually happen. Interesting. However, that doesn't change my answer though. I still huh. think you can heal injuries, but I think you have to align natural laws and processes in order to heal them. So hmm. I, um, I like am such a believer that I don't have to live that way, that I'm not destined to just have to suffer from depression for forever. Hmm. I fully believe that that does not have to be like my burden to bear for forever. So what I seek to, because I believe that I have sought like professional, I, I do professional, um, like I work with a coach every week on it. Um, who's professionally certified. I like have read tons of books on it. I try as my best to understand the neuroscience, uh, like neuropsychology, neurobiology, and that all helps me understand if I can, if I can change really what I'm, what's happening is just, I have, chemical reactions to stimuli and if yeah. i can if i can change patterns of the way that i naturally react to a stimulus then i actually will be able to change the way that my mind um uh that i start to feel because of the actions of my mind but that takes like a concerted effort and process and understanding hmm. takes building habits <clears throat> and over time so if you were to if you were to look at me like five years ago yeah um I would have said, no, there's no way like I'm destined to have this forever, but I just decided huh. that I'm just not going to, that's won't be the case for me. And so fast forward five years, like I would say, yeah, but it happened because of a really concerted effort and of aligning like true principles together to make it happen. And not just one, one way of, of attacking that. Yeah. Or not just, not just will, not just wishing that it would change. And, yeah. and, um, I don't view what you're doing as wishing, but, but it's like a, you know, it's like a guy who's drowning in the ocean and prays to, have you heard this story where yeah, he prays, yeah, to, prays to God for help and God sends, or there's a lifeboat that comes by and he's mm -hmm. like, no, I'm waiting for God to help me, right? And in reality, it's like God sends the lifeboat to help him. I think that you have to take advantage of the things that we know and align yeah. those things in order to experience some sort of healing. So, so I, even, I think about this sometimes in a lot of ways because I think we 
we, I, and I mean, we, in our podcast, we talk about the power of our mind and, and, and envisioning the end, yeah. you know, starting from backwards and building. <clears throat> um, and I just want to, want to be clear that like, Doing it in your mind is one step of it, right? Yeah, like seeing one. it, it's one step. It's like just the beginning step. If you only did that, like you didn't really do anything, right? <laughs> yeah, like Da Vinci, right? <laughs> yeah. If he was just to say like, you know, I, I want to be the guy that's known for just thinking about a statue and all of a sudden it appears. It's like. Exactly. That was only and, the first step. Exactly. And then, but I do also believe like the power of your mind that like you can't, that it, that it, that is an important step mm. uh, in the process, right? Like it is an important step. Mm. Um, and I also think like, I, I think a lot about like um, the subconscious mind, right? Mm. Like what do we subconsciously believe? Like, sure. it's one thing to say, hey, no, Hayden, I want you to believe that this, that your mind can heal you. But until like your subconscious mind believes that it won't happen. Right. So like. Correct. Yeah. So like many times, many times, I think even when we talk, part of that is like us trying to convince ourselves that we believe it in a sense. Right. <laughs> like who are you trying to convince in that? <laughs> yeah. So um, what I'm getting at is like, I think it's an interesting concept that some of our body's most important functions, I would say, um, aren't left up to our consciousness. Mm. And, and I would, I would talk about like an injury, say like, uh, maybe you broke your arm, right. Or maybe you broke your leg or, uh, say maybe you had just had surgery on your eyes. Yeah. Right. Uh, the doctor after these things would, would come with, with suggestions of what you should do for healing. Right. Sure. And at the top of that list <clears throat> is going to be rest is going to be sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's interesting that it's almost like taking your conscious mind out of it. Um, and making you go to dude. sleep and that applies to, to sickness as well. Sure. Right. Like the best thing you can do is rest. Right. And I wonder like, is there, a, a, is there anything in there, um, about taking your conscious mind out of it because sometimes our conscious mind immediately like wants to think of the problems with it. Right. Or like, hmm. like issues with it. And I even would go back to even like a digestion, right? We don't consciously think like, Hey, let's break these enzymes up and let's send these, these ones to these muscles and this to our brain. And right. Like, like I would say that's our most important function right and we don't even really think about we don't have to sure. think about it our heart breathing. sometimes we think about our our heart rate but for the most part we don't our breathing like how come some of our body's most important functions are uh, not left to our consciousness well are, are you do you want to hear like my thoughts absolutely thoughts on this? yeah um so i and I, this is my only opinion that I've gathered from like limited research that I've done. I I'm pretend to be like no even close to expert on anything, right? Okay. Including cryptocurrency and losing everyone's <laughs> money if they ever listen to me. How I feel, how I, what I think though, but from my limited understanding is that if our conscious mind was built to be in charge of all of our most vital functions, then mm -hmm. it would it would take up so much space um, in our awareness that we couldn't keep up with everything si like simultaneously. Yeah. You couldn't consciously manage how to make your heart rate, be heart rate beat at the right pace um, and how to like uh, regulate your blood pressure naturally um, and how to like circulate uh, your blood and the oxygen to the right places at the right times and nutrient and diet and um, digestion brain function. You know, you couldn't yeah. blinking, right? Like, how you sleep, when you sleep, what your body does during sleep, like you wouldn't be able to regulate those consciously. So from a logistical perspective, like how come those things are unconscious? Well, because they can't, they couldn't be conscious. That's like maybe my first thought. Okay. It would be impossible for, for them to all be conscious at once. Um, and so they, so our bodies are built so that they manage those things behind the scenes so that it's, there's, it's a, uh, it becomes like automatic, right? Yeah. But you could consciously, would you say that you can consciously ever tap into that or communicate? Yeah, with oh, that? absolutely. And I think you, maybe this is where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, I think the tr the trick to getting anything that you want out of life is being able to ingrain within your subconscious habits 
things that will lead to you getting the outcomes that you desire, right? Anything, yeah. whether that's a financial, a relationship, whatever. And especially if you're trying to re-script yourself to be something something that you, you've never been before, like even going back to like the depression thing, right? Like I'm literally trying to re-script myself so that I can break a chain that has existed for years and years and years. Yeah. And that will not happen without making something conscious become unconscious and habitual. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. but it takes it, it first. It starts with con that consciousness. So let's talk about, I think that would be a great thing to talk about. Let's talk about how do you think you um, would com would communicate with your subconscious? Because I've heard it explained. <laughs> I, I've heard this explained yeah, I, in a couple ways. Is, yeah, it's fascinating. One, I've heard it explained of like, it, they, if you think of yourself as as different consciousness, right? So you have your one, your brain, your conscious mind, what's going on right now, how you interpret things, what's happening, um, your responses. And then you would have, I guess you would even have your spiritual side, right? Yeah. But then you would have your subconscious side that just does things automatically. Right. 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 So like how, On what's autopilot. the balance there and how do you commute? Would, would your subconsciousness, since that's kind of who you, how you do things naturally, or I guess you would say naturally, right? Yeah. Not naturally, oh. automatically, um, subconsciously is the only way I even think. Yeah. To. So how would you, how is it important to communicate with that? And how would you do it? Um, well, so Napoleon Hill says that, uh, he talks about this idea of auto suggestion that we're kind of, we're always suggesting something to our subconscious mind on autopilot. Um, and that's basically a function of how we've been scripted to believe about things in the world. So mm -hmm. if I just have the, if I let's, let's say I grew up in a family where like my, um, my parents were very loving and kind and like gracious and like perfect, just per the perfect ideal family, then I'm going to have that ingrained in my mind. And, and whenever I get into a situation where like, I need to discipline my kids. The auto suggestion part of me is going to revert to like how I was, how I was raised and taught yeah. hab habitually. Right. Yeah. So you're always suggesting to your mind um, something. Well, Napoleon Hill says in order to achieve the things that you want, you have to create a system that auto suggests to yourself what you actually want and then ingrain that through repetition. <laughs> yeah. But repetition isn't enough. Um, he says any thought emotionalized, and acted on in a spirit of faith hmm. will bring itself. So any thought repeated, emotionalized, and acted upon in a spirit of faith will bring itself to its most logical, physical conclusion. So if I have a thought and I emotionally am attached to that thought and I act on that thought, I will have that thought in reality at some point. Hmm. It's inevitable, right? Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, so, but the way that you do that, he talks about like prayer is one way that people, yeah, will I've heard that he too. actually yeah. says that it, if you want to go really meta, he says that it communicate when you act on an emotionalized thought, it communicates that to like, a a, wow. a higher power. So, so <laughs> that, that brings up a lot for me. Deep. Yeah, this is wild. I'm going to search the part and then I'll read it. So that done. brings up years ago, um, people would often ask me like, do you, do you say, do you do prayer? Yeah. And uh, for years, I, I didn't believe in prayer. Well, okay. I believed in prayer, but only to a certain extent. And let me let me explain this. So I believed I believed that I thought prayer was interesting because people I, I often caught myself repeating the same prayer. Right. Okay. And I came to the decision that <clears throat> I'll never repeat a prayer again okay. because I felt like what I'm doing is showing a disbelief that it, it, it's going to happen. I thought if I mo if I keep saying the same prayer and I'm praying to, to God, right? Yeah. Um, or whoever you're praying to. But for me, it was God, right? And I thought, doesn't that show that I didn't believe him the first time I asked him? <laughs> like if I truly I believed that. it, wouldn't I only ask one time? Huh? Right? Like I would only ask one time and I would believe it so much that that's what would happen. Huh. So I went through this years and years of like, I will pray one time, right? One For time. If you were in need of something or about something. About or, something, yeah. in need of something, uh, wanted something or wanted somebody to heal in some way. I felt like it was, it was really silly to pray about things multiple times because do I believe that this is possible or not? Or do I believe like, because I would never want my child to ask me over and over and over again for something, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> That's a really unique perspective, dude. I think it's super uncommon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it, it reminds me this week, one of my friends called me up this week who, uh, who's a UFC coach, coach of, coach of Jerome, right? Josh Pontoya. He called me up this week and, and during the holidays, um, people tend to have a little extra time on their hands, right? And he had extra time. <clears throat> so he listened to the podcast uh, and he'd listened to it before, but he w- it really had the opportunity to get caught up, right? Yeah. And uh, he knows he's a good friend of mine. He can call me anytime. And, you know, if I'm uh, available, I'll chat with him. And he calls me up and and he's like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> and he starts rattling them off, right? Like, hey, uh, what was your... What was your purpose when your dad died? Like, what changed? What happened when your dad died? Like, why did you, did you become a different person? Hmm. I was like, and then when you got married, like, did you change? Did you become a different person? Like, what was your purpose then? And I'm like, hold on, hold on, take it easy, right? <laughs> I'm like, let's talk about when my dad died. And he, I, I said, well, what do you want to know about that? And uh, I, I bring up my dad dying because. I bring this up because prayer, this is when prayer really started to, to take this idea in my mind of like, huh. why would I pray multiple times, right? So my dad's in the hospital, my dad ends up dying. And uh, as I look back in my life, I recognize that I became a different person when this happened. And I recognize that, that I changed in that moment, right? I became somebody different in a sense. And it was really my mindset that changed. And, and I, I, I don't know why I wanted to talk about this with him, but I said, What happened, I said, if I can go back um, and and discuss what I think was going on in my mind. Uh And he goes, well, well, this is exactly what I want to talk about. Because I noticed that Hayden had um, also childhood and death in in his childhood. And and do you guys think that 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 shaped you and changed you? And how did it change you? And what was your purpose after that? And I was like, that's interesting. My feeling on that is, I said, and this is me as an adult looking back, but my feeling on that is, is what really changed for me is that I realized that the world is, uh, I realized I was lied to when he died, when my dad died. Wow. And I said, and what that did to me is it, re- it really affected me because I noticed that people don't want to tell the truth. People want to make it sound better than it than it really is, right? Hmm. Like people want to say, oh, your dad, don't worry, your dad's going to be in a better place. They want to find all these good reasons um, why this is, was a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, or, they, or they don't really want to talk too much about it, right? They just want to help in some way. They want to bring food. They want to um, ask how you're doing, but really not ask how you're doing. Yeah. And, I, and looking back, I, I think that, that, that the way that shaped me and gave me a purpose in my life is it is it made me want to bring more honesty uh, to myself and to others and find truth, right? Huh. I wanted really people to communicate in a better fashion and to recognize that, hey, the world is a brutal place and it's vicious. <laughs> yeah. And it's not all peaches and sunshine and it'll beat you to your knees, right? Like yeah. Rocky says, like it will beat <laughs> you to the ground, right? And you know what's wild? Like, dude life beats everybody right life life breaks everybody and you know what some people are stronger because of it some people get stronger because of it and what i Mm. felt like i did in that in that moment in that time in that person in in that moment in my life as i felt like I, i i made the decision that i would rather you guys just tell me the truth yeah i would rather just know that you know what Sometimes good people die. And you know what? Sometimes people who are amazing get cancer and it doesn't work out. Yep. Right? Like mm. I, I would rather almost be faced with that truth. And I think go even going back to last week, that's what scares me about things like Santa Claus, right? <laughs> As I'm like, like, why are we pretending things are better than they are? When when if we just let the truth be there, the truth will actually make us stronger. It'll give us the strength to be like, dude, yeah, I grew back stronger because of this. Similar to working out, right? We talk about it all the time. Like the only way to get strong muscles, the only way to to grow (laughs) is to tear that muscle and let it grow back. Yeah. Let it grow back stronger because your body says, hey, this tore my muscle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it back stronger. Mm. Right? So then your body makes it bigger. It makes it stronger. It makes it able to to handle more resistance. And so so I talked about that with him. And I also feel looking back that like, 
I just want want to communicate truth. And I think that's why jujitsu <clears throat> to this day is important to me is, is I'm able Dude, to communicate that's an interesting connection. truthfully with people, right? Wow. And so that's like, I know we talked about this before. Uh, I think it was episode two or three, but which was like so good, by the way. Um, how, why you teach jujitsu the way that you do and why you have such a focus on like it revealing the truth of who you really are, right? Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because you were faced with that from a young age of like, no, just like, tell me the truth. Like, I don't want to be lied to. Dude, you know what's really fascinating is like, uh, I oftentimes joke that I like have a lie detector built into my brain because it's like yeah. really easy for me to tell when people are lying to me <laughs> or even just like fibbing oh, a little yeah. bit. And it drives me, it, it doesn't drive me crazy. It's really awkward for me to yeah, listen to someone lie to me mm -hmm. or, or, or even if it's just like a little bit of a shade of a lie, yeah, like an exaggeration or whatever, it's really awkward for me to play along because I feel like I'm participating in the lie. If I yeah, play absolutely. along. And I so like if someone, tell, if someone lies to me and is telling me a story that I just like know is not true, like I can just feel it. Mm -hmm. And it's so obvious. Um, I get, it's really awkward. I like start to, it, it, but all, after a while, you I can don't be patient with it, a little yeah. bit. I hate it, dude. Yeah. And I, I think lately I've been categorizing it as like, I think it's because I feel like my intelligence is being insulted. Like, do yeah. you really think that I'm stupid enough to not realize that you're like lying to me? Like that that's not true what you're saying, right? Huh. But I don't know if that's actually the case. What I really think it is though, from what you're saying now is like, and this is my breakthrough as you were talking <laughs> is like, I actually really hated when people would do that to me as well early on yeah like especially as a little kid that happening like experiencing death like witnessing a, a very close family member pass away and a brother pass away and then having to be like having people be like you know i hate it and like it's gonna be an okay and i just be like look <laughs> this does not feel okay Dude, to me yeah yeah and um because the truth to me feels like it's not actually that great um but really though maybe that's actually okay too right like Maybe it's okay that it's not going to be okay for now at least, but you can find, I think as I started to like really embrace that aspect of difficulty and challenge, I mean, no wonder I like love putting myself through pain at the gym, you know, yeah. no, no wonder. Like I really, I, when I'm doing something that is really hard, like I just feel at home. Like it feels like I, it's like a, like a kid feels about their memories of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes me back to when i was like huh this is just it almost feels like a, at huh? home i i might have to get nose surgery because my nose has been pretty jacked up from playing sports um my whole life and uh i actually had this weird thought today at the gym i was like if i actually do have to get nose surgery i wonder if the doctor would let me get nose surgery without any any painkillers <laughs> or without putting me under and if i could like do an experiment of like having him re-break my nose and like feel no the whole way. pain of it I'm not being masochistic. Different, different. I just want to like feel that depth of pain to understand like what it's like, you know, man, we got to go back here though. Okay. Sorry. This yeah, nose thing is golden, <laughs> but do you think so? So he, when I was answering this to him, he wanted to know like, what, what do you think that that, and it sounds like, like you did, but do you think you recognized at that point when people were lying to you? Like when they said it's going to be okay? Well, uh i mean it was it's hard to tell if i was i guess thinking that they were lying i don't yeah. think i ever actually thought about it that way until recently you, okay. us talking about this but i do remember feeling like why are you trying to sugarcoat this this like yeah. you know I, that's not really what i need right now like someone telling me that it's all going to be okay yeah i mean even as, as like sarah and i are kind of going through our stuff right now too it's like I don't ever even have the urge to say like, hey, it's going to be okay type of thing. Yeah. It's always more of along the lines of like, we're strong and we're going to like get through this well. We're going to do this well, you know, yeah. like we're, we're strong and this is like our burden to bear and we'll be able to help people because of the burden that we have to bear right now. Um, that's, that's a very different thing than like saying, hey, let's go ignore this for a minute and just pretend like it's all going to be okay, you know? Yeah. Um, Because then you miss out on you miss out on the very thing that would make it so that you can help other people who don't know how to handle that. If that Absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I'm directly. Answering no, I the love, question, but, I, I um, love the way you're, where you're going though, because even, even in my own family, like my kids, we have this saying in our, in our house, like, uh, like my son, son a while back was having trouble. He, he we, we do kickboxing, we do jujitsu in my <laughs> house, right? Like these guys, we have a gym in our house. Like that's all what we do. <laughs> 
five hours out of the day almost <laughs> like um there was a point where it's like is he gonna hit other other kids and hit uh, other kids uh, hit other kids or what's mm -hmm. he gonna do you know is he gonna be restless and that was a point where they're like yeah he's really wild and i said well well let me talk to him like i i you guys can tell him something but he let he i'm his dad like i spend the time with him i, I believe he'll listen to me and i really thought what do i say and, and i remembered that we have this saying in our family and, and the saying is i can do hard things and i like to do hard things mm. right i love that i can do hard things and i like to do hard things and to me that's almost what you're saying right there is yep. i can do hard things and i like to do hard things and I think as I look back at the trauma that we had a, a, as kids, like that's essentially, that's almost what happened is, mm. is we, we got this fluff, this sugar coating, or at least I know I got sugar coating. Yeah, and sure, and in the times when I was alone, mm. when I was by myself, I recognized that it was sugar coating because they told me it was going to be okay. And I found out it wasn't okay. <laughs> They told yeah. me I was going to be okay. And I found out I wasn't okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was broken mm -hmm. and I realized like that wasn't true what you said. And now I, I have to, like they say, every man must search his own soul. Right. And, mm -hmm. and as a young boy, I had to search my own soul and figure out how to, how to grow from this. And in that process, I learned that it was okay to be broken yeah. because you'll grow back stronger, but you, you, you do have to face that. Right. Right. And in many cases, like I tell people this all the time, you don't, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. <laughs> yeah. Right. <Wow. laughs> you don't have to win them all, but you better fight them. Mm. So I felt like in this case, I didn't win that fight. I did. I, even looking back, like, if I needed to cry on set, I know I could draw on the experiences of, of my dad dying and being at, wow. the, at his bedside and being the one who had to say, yeah, go ahead and pull the plug. Right. Wow. Um, I, I, I would even like to, I'll even tell that story when, uh, when my dad was dying, he was in the hospital and I'm my dad's only child. They, the doctors came to me, um, because they needed the verbal okay from me to pull the plug on him. Wow, right. Dude. You he were 16, 16. And he was on, he was on a, uh, breathing machine. Right. And, uh, I had gotten a phone call from my aunt and she had said, uh, she was flying in, going to fly in from California and she was getting ready to get on a plane. And she had said, uh, rich, whatever you do, make sure he's alive when I get there. Hmm. Okay. Like whatever you do, like, please just make sure he's alive. And this is his his only sister, right? He's got another brother, but his only sister. Mm. She's flying in from California. And I remember that pretty vividly, like, okay, she wants to make sure and see him one more time. Um, and it was pretty clear he was going to die. And the doctors came in. They're like, hey, we think it's time to go ahead and pull the plug. Um, and, I'm, and I remember thinking, like, well, my aunt want, wants to wait, wants us to wait for her. Um, and their response was, he'll live, he'll live several hours after we take him off of the, off the machines. Like, it won't even be a big deal. And I remember being like, uh, trying to make a decision. And, and they're like, I, we think we should do it now. And I don't, looking back, I don't know why they wanted to do it at that moment, but they did. And I agreed to that. Hmm. Um, and he never took another breath. As soon as they took him off, he died. Wow. Like that was it. Um, and one of the hardest things I ever had to do was at that point, me and my uncle went to pick up my aunt from the airport. Dang, man. Um, and back then you would, could just walk right into the airport mm -hmm. right we walk right in and as soon as she got off the plane um i see her and of course she's crying and i mean we got to tell her yeah he's, he's gone like he's like you won't even be able to see him and i remember we we she was I, I don't remember everything but i remember we had to rush we decided to rush back to the hospital because she just wanted to see him so bad mm. after and i don't remember if she was ever able to see him um, in that moment. And I don't know why that was important to her. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, like I recognized that, that, that wasn't okay in her mind and that, um, life's not fair, man. Hmm. And it's not okay. Right. Like things, bad things happen. Hmm. And sometimes bad things happen to kids. Yeah. Another hard thing I had to do in my life. Like I have a, I have a brother who, uh, a half brother who had a, who had a, a baby and uh that baby lived 30 days and uh, I, I had to witness this right we, we we tried to go to the hospital every single day and i remember remember he asked me at one point like if there's a god right like if there's a real god like why would he allow a baby to die 
Like, how does that make any sense? Hmm. You know, and again, I go back to what would I tell myself in these hard times or what would I tell somebody? And I come back to, you just got to tell the truth, man. Yeah. You got to tell the truth and you got to say, you know what? Right now it hurts and it's going to hurt and you got to accept that and embrace it and tell yourself, I can do hard things. I like I to like do to hard, do hard things. things. Right. Man, that's so. Real. So with that said, my son, we had the one conversation and, you know, he, he corrected doing, his doing issue. Good? Yeah, he's kicking butt. Let's go. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we anyhow, so he, he he's doing great. And that, and that's how I feel about it. And that's why, again, back to jujitsu, that's why I love it, because it's the truth. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's huge, thought. dude. It, and, it, and again, like why I love doing what I'm doing, too, and really like why I teach um, sales and uh, like cold calling door knocking like the the hardest form of sales you could possibly do why i'm obsessed with it is because it it's the <clears throat> you fabricate I, I came up with this like phrase of how i kind of view like experiences like that um it's like a simulation that's preparing you for something like greater right so if you can put yourself in a simulation like pilots will simulate perfectly simulate what it's like to fly a plane mm -hmm. over and over and over again before they like do it you know yeah. and i think adversity is some sort of simulation that like actually is teaching us how to handle harder and harder things like throughout life and we all have our adversity because we're all in different stages and like life is just gonna it, it will present based on where you're at it's you're gonna have adversity that seems just as hard to you as it does to me in my own sphere, even though they might be different things, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but I love what I do because much like you, you can fabricate a simulation. Like you can yeah. literally build out what that simulation is like and you can teach someone how to practice it in something that doesn't really matter a ton if you think about it. Like, um, you know, doing a sales job or like rolling in jujitsu, like even fighting in the UFC, like, I don't know that that matters like a ton, but how you do that makes it so that you can be something for the people you care about most and you love most in the things that do matter, Absolutely. like being um, a good husband, good father, like being good to the people that you care about and love, serving and contributing to people's lives, right? Yeah. Um, like that's what it really is all about because if you can't handle adversity in your own life, good luck trying to help other people dude yeah you know? <laughs> there's absolutely. no way it's never happening and nobody um, and nobody lives a life without adversity no, right no i mean I, yeah and i and i guess that's really what i get at at the end of it all is yeah. like hey man nobody gets out pain free like that's what we're here to do is to experience that and and physical pain i'm glad you brought up the mental pain too mm -hmm. because physical pain is one thing right but anybody who who knows anything about the ocean knows it's not it's not the water on the surface that drowns you, right? It's what's going on underneath. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. I love that you shared that quote. It's like one of my favorites that you shared with me. That's incredible. Um, yeah, it's really sobering thought to think about, you know, but like like pain itself and adversity. We, it's funny that we, I don't know how we end up doing this like so perfectly. We went from like talking about physical pain to like, uh, you know, adversity, which causes, I think, emotional pain and you don't actually get to experience happiness and peace and joy without experiencing pain. Like we just actually wouldn't be able to, it'd be impossible, you know? Yeah. So like the, I think the beauties in life are caused by a contrast of extremes. So like hmm. to the depth of your pain that you experience, that's to the same depth of happiness and joy you can experience. But if I never actually allow myself to, have pain or adversity and I always try to sidestep it with other things like I'm not going to actually be that happy um, yeah does that make sense absolutely that's I think about like um uh, sometimes I'll talk to young guys about to get married or have kids and one of the things I tell them is like marriage marriage to me like what including having kids but marriage especially what it really does is magnify experiences right yeah like the good times are amazing right like mm -hmm. i even remember like seeing hawaii for the first time 
And then versus like seeing Hawaii with my wife, right? Like yeah, experiencing yeah, totally. these places with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and then versus like uh, doing it by yourself. But then with that said, adversity, right? Like me and my wife going through adversity, like, dude, yeah. it magnified that pain, right? Yeah, it was, totally. I, I almost even remember thinking in times of adversity of like with my wife of like, dude, like just give it all to me. I'd rather almost just bear it all, <laughs> right? Yeah. But the, you can't do that. Right. You almost have to live in that moment of making it worse, mm. like maximum amount. Interesting, dude. You know? That's really interesting. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you'll experience a new level of highs and a new level of lows, like something you never yeah. imagined. Right. Hmm. But there's there's something like really beautiful about going through adversity and pain with someone else. Even yeah. though it does magnify it, um, <laughs> yeah. it also there's like a richness to it that I think if uh, if people are drowning out like that pain and the and the difficulty by like even just something as simple as like notifications, social media information, like you've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. If you're always bombarded with those things, or on the extreme end of that spectrum, you know, drug, alcohol, pornography, whatever is making it so that you're doling those things out you you miss this like rich and rich richness and depth oh, yeah. to life that like you just would never be able to experience unless you allowed yourself to feel it yeah absolutely so i have this theory that i call the cold shower theory okay so first time i took a cold shower it was in idaho during the middle of the winter i had committed <laughs> that i was gonna take a cold shower for five minutes for 30 days straight <clears throat> i hate cold water hated ice baths whenever we were like uh in sports right just yeah. absolutely hated them like shy away i mean you know this about me if like any yeah. sort of uncomfort i'm like ah like, yeah. uh, <laughs> tell me why yeah, i'm gonna do this yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me real good reason first bro because <laughs> uh, so i'm like i'm just gonna do this this is i identified the physical thing that i hated the most and then i committed to do it for 30 days okay so first day i'm like it was the most i like I must have been such a little wimp, dude, because it was the most painful thing ever. Like actually physically hurt taking a cold shower <sighs> for even the, fir the yeah. first three seconds. I was just like, oh, and it w it's not getting better because you're not fully immersed in the water. Right. But it's like ice cold water sprinkling all over you, uh, all over your back. And like it just I remember even turning and it hitting my chest and be like, oh, gosh, dude, I can't do this. This is crazy. Um, So then I but I made it through the five minutes somehow excruciating like unbearable i think i actually probably stepped aside from the water like to wash my hair and then step back in you know so i was probably only in it for a minute total like 20 seconds but i just that pissed me off so bad dude that i was upset that I, that, it, that it hurt it was like no way and but the way that i was handling it right <clears throat> so i'm really thinking about this and th dude this is a silly cold shower right it's almost as silly as me. <laughs> it's almost shower. as silly as like in jits this week when you're like, Hayden, you look the best you've ever looked this week. And I'm still like so frustrated because there's like that right. one thing I'm like pissed about. <laughs> so that's how I felt. So the whole day, I'm in like meeting. I worked a 16 hour day that day. I'm like in meetings all day long in interviews and like talking to people and working and in my spreadsheets and forecasts and all that stuff. But I just can't stop thinking about like how much I hated this cold shower. I was like, there's no possible way. <laughs> that cold water is causing me is taking up this much real estate in my mind like mm -hmm. there's no way that that's this is not happening right yeah. so i'm like evaluating why that's happening and then the conclusion that i came to was i think why it hurts so bad is because i'm trying to like resist how bad i think it hurts hmm. so i'm like i'm like playing it up in my mind basically right so i'm going to test yeah. this theory so the next day i'm like okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see how bad it actually hurts because I'm pretty hmm. sure I'm making it hurt worse than it does. Okay. Yeah. And again, this is, this is like freezing, freezing cold water. So I get in the shower and I just am like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to breathe deeply and I'm just going to allow myself to feel like what, what the water feels like and identify it almost like meditative. Right. So mm -hmm. like, you know, when you meditate, you actually feel <laughs> okay, the breath, yeah. you try to follow the yeah. breath in and out and you like, how does it feel as it's going in and out of the airways or whatever. So I do that and I'm like, what on earth dude this doesn't hurt at all this it doesn't hurt no like not way. even a little bit like what the you heck happened bro so i get out of the shower and then this i have this thought come into my mind it's like it's the resistance to pain that causes more pain oh yeah so like fighting against pain or fighting against hardship resisting pain is actually the thing that's causing you the most pain it's not the pain itself Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, a, it's really like, and that's a silly example, but it's really about facing the things that cause you the most pain. If you, fa if you can face them head on, 
like it actually isn't that bad man just thinking Does that about, make sense yeah but yeah. even thinking about it automatically what comes to my mind is like that's that's our biggest problem with change right exactly <laughs> it's the resistance <laughs> to change that causes like the, the trauma the hardship yeah like oh man but i don't want to change i don't want to be healthier or i don't want to <laughs> run more or get stronger yeah it's hard it's painful yeah man interesting huh very interesting i love it and i love that 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 your mind was able to do that as well you know mm -hmm. i think uh i think it's interesting that's why i'm loving jujitsu jiu man dude jujitsu is like, the best man i'm loving it you, it's just the simulation for me just sim just simulating like adversity you're simulating that pain simulating adversity simulating what you do the in fight. those hardships uh, but you text me today okay and uh <laughs> you'd said to, to to remind you of something you remember what that was well, I'm about to read it to remember because that's yeah. why I texted you because I knew I was going to forget, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm, I started Seven Habits again um, and I'm just like knee deep, dude, in that stuff. It is so good. Okay. Um, so Covey says in the beginning, before he even gets into habit one about be proactive, he's okay. talking about paradigms and principles, like what it means to live a principle centered life, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he talks about people who are dependent on others, independent, and then interdependent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're dependent on others and I'm like, everything I do, I'm just reactionary to everything, right? I'm literally not even living my own life. Like if I'm a, if I'm a <laughs> right. dependent person, like, let's say I was dependent in this podcast. Like, it's the Rich Chavez show, and <laughs> it's only ever going to be as good as you. That's it, right? Yeah. So I always say this, too, to my, like, sales reps. Like, if you don't prepare, when you show up for the sales season, you, it's, like, good luck changing because, like, you're going to perform as good as you already are. If you're a winner, you're probably going to keep winning. Right. If you're a loser, you're probably going to lose. But if you're a loser and you take some time to prepare, you can become a winner. You just have to prepare, right? So yeah. if I'm dependent, then I'm just basically living out my habits. I'm living out my past circumstances. <laughs> I'm living out I'm living out somebody else's life. Like we're all living out a first creation, right? It might not be my own though. <laughs> um, uh, so like that's a dependent person. An independent person is like, they can pretty much act for themselves. So I can do things on my own. Independent people don't like to be around others typically. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm not talking about introvert, introverted. I'm talking like they feel really good about the fact that they can do things on their own. They're mm -hmm. reliable, right? An independent person They're is, like in a, control. is in control, <laughs> is reliable. But <clears throat> Covey talks about how like once you master independence, the next step is to become interdependent with someone. And that's what you, you were talking <laughs> about exactly being it. wanted or needed, right? Yeah. Like, would you rather be wanted or needed? Well, dude what if the what if you're both independent what if you're both independent people and you don't need each other then what then well now what? we're talking about like some synergy right so mm -hmm. like now what you can do together will be greater than anything that you could do on your own yeah right so what he says though he goes he goes the he says the real goal is interdependence because the most beauty in life is felt when two independent people are acting together for a common purpose like which is why i yeah. think like that's why marriage is so beautiful if you do it right mm -hmm. but that's actually why i think people hate marriage though oh, as yeah. a whole is because yeah most people are dependent people in a marriage hoping that the other person will somehow be the person they can depend on but right. in reality that person is also a dependent person too and right. so then they become what co-dependent on each other and forever miserable right um so what covey says is dependent people can never become interdependent they can never experience the joys and synergies of an yeah. interdependent relationship and this is why he says why because they do not own enough of themselves hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you, does your mind start to catch like even what that means i don't even know fully what that means but this is one of those things where i'm like that's hmm. so profound to me that like i can't ever have a beautiful relationship with someone i'm talking friend my marriage, business partners, like people that I like love and care about, my family. I can't ever be a good brother unless I own my own life. And if I'm always just living out the scripts that other people give to me, if I'm only ever just walking with the map that someone gives me, yeah, then, and it's not my own, then I don't own enough of myself to become, do you see what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And to I, actually become like a truly like beneficial person in a relationship. Um, the other thing that Covey says is like, we shouldn't ask for maps. We should ask for compasses. Hmm. So we don't want a map just to tell us where to go. Rather, we need a compass so that we can navigate ourselves. Yeah. We, um, anyway, this what are your thoughts powerful. on that? My, my first thought is that takes me back <clears throat> to almost where we started. Yeah. Where it's like, are a lot of those our subconsciousness the things that were ingrained in us that mm -hmm. we had no no yes, say dude. over and then as we grow older it, you have to take the time to to find oh, out dude. what those are how did you just pull that full <laughs> circle dude, again dude, the yeah, freak? No. <laughs> so, so really like and dude and that's literally that's what covey talks about too as i was reading that this morning i was like wow this is so profound because that is exactly the next thing that he talks about is like in order for you to become someone who can experience the full joys of life, and those things can only be had in relationships with other people, the only way to do that is to rescript yourself so that you own everything about yourself, mm -hmm. where you are truly <laughs> deciding, like, I can go reevaluate and I can say, like, hey, what good things did I learn from my parents growing up that I want to keep? And I can also say, and what things do I not like very much that I don't want to do? But like if I if I'm never become an independent person, I can never actually even get there. I'm literally just right. gonna be the byproduct of everyone else around me and what I currently am, you know. Yeah. And if you never question why you even want to do it. Oh. Yeah, that's starting with that yeah. first and foremost. Why so, do I even want to? But okay. then the, like making that conscious and saying, Oh, you well, first of all, Covey says self awareness is actually the first step, like yeah. becoming self aware. Which is literally you jujitsu, right? <laughs> you like that's why you, yeah, we you fabricate go back the simulation so you can like yeah. make the self awareness. So you drive mm -hmm. self awareness, and then once you can get really honest with yourself, then you decide what do I really want, and mm -hmm. what, based on what's value, what's most valuable to me, and hopefully that's built off of true principles, which is what Covey argues is the only way to actually live a meaningful life. And then you say, okay, now how does that look in my everyday world? Where is my life off? Okay, whenever my spouse says this thing. Or like whenever she does something that's like kind of annoying to me and I react this way, is that really something, is that me value? Like if I were to sit down and say, hey, I value my marriage. Like that's true, right? I totally mm -hmm. value my marriage. But like what behaviors am I doing in my marriage that would say that I don't though? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> right? Absolutely. If you were a fly on the wall at yeah. my house, when would you say like, yeah, yeah, Hayden, uh, I don't think that right there sounds like you value your marriage very much. So I can go look at those things and I can say, you know what? I don't like that, but I don't have to be like that. So then- I can decide why don't I want to be like that? Go back to why. And I can mm -hmm. rescript it. That's where I think the power of the mind comes in to change oneself is to analyze like beforehand with your imagination how you would do it differently. And then you you rehearse it over and over and over again. Like yeah. it's literally like Da Vinci sculpting the statue of David and saying like, I know this is a block right now that's like really unkept, but this is going to be like something beautiful soon, but I have to picture it first. I have to imagine. I have to imagine yeah. the detail. And that's how you, that's how you make consciousness become subconscious through imagination and through rehearsal and then through acting that out in like the real world, you know, and that's literally how you change. That's, that, that is the, how someone becomes, that's how a nobody kid from Albuquerque can yep. go do something that like his family's never done before. It's like that. Yeah, and it it started in the inside. Yeah, literally. So yeah, literally exactly. has to start in the inside. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I I wonder sometimes. I wonder what like age or when do people start looking in the inside like that? <laughs> you know, like at, we all know like when when puberty comes and when people are considered an adult or when they're able to vote or yeah. buy cigarettes or whatnot. But like the real consciousness, at, at what point do are you mentally able to start to do that? You know. Um, but I think, I think it's a new, it's a new thing as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's something pretty amazing to watch happen, hmm. um, is even to see people consciously wake up and realize like, oh yeah, no, I'm in control of this. And sure. because I say I have this habit, it, it's just something that was told to me totally when I was a kid and it's not even true. Huh? Dude. Fascinating. You know, but that's why I love jujitsu again. Right. Like I, I always say, man, I, like. Dude, I'll learn more about somebody in five <laughs> minutes of grappling than I will in years of knowing them. Um, but another aspect of that is, is oftentimes I can introduce people to themselves, mm. you know, let them see who they really are. And I heard this quote a long time ago in my life and it always stuck with me. It was um, sports don't build character. They, they reveal it. Reveal it. 
So right. like, I think the exact same thing with money is like money doesn't oh, build yeah. character, like totally reveals it though. And like, you better watch out. Like if people, yeah. if people want to like hmm. make, make money, like money that I'm talking about money that like gives you real choices in life. Hmm. That's I think the most dangerous thing you could ever want, because if you're not the type of person that is prone to live a life of like goodness and principles, then like that that money is going to expose you for who you are and it will not be pretty you know wow because it just gives you more options than you've ever had before yeah. and so like if you're a generous person you'll be overly generous with money if you're a selfish person you'll be even absolutely. more selfish than you've ever been before um absolutely no i i love that i think that's interesting excellent. yeah the last thing i was thinking about today was uh you were we we kind of started out talking about like uh, the subconscious and the unconscious and how uh -huh. our bodies, um, especially when they're in, in moments of healing it, we, we take away our consciousness out of it. Right. And we, we go into an unconsciousness, which is, which is rest. Uh -huh. Um, and you were, you were saying that, well, yeah, but I've heard that maybe there's too much going on that we would even be able to comprehend. Yeah. And as you were thinking, as you were mentioning that it reminded me of like how amazing even like our eye is. Mm. and all that's going on in our eyeball like one year well, maybe a couple years i got really into studying uh magicians oh dude i've been waiting so long for you to talk <laughs> about this yeah oh, this is like <laughs> so, this is gonna have to be a preview buckle up bro time. yeah this is a whole metal i know level, can right? we just do a whole episode on magic so uh, like we, yeah we will but Please. let's just start with okay. that right. so i'd like magicians because a lot of neuroscientists out there when they write books they talk about magicians because magicians are on the forefront of like manipulating the mind right <laughs> yeah getting you to believe something and think that you saw something and and even say you saw something but you didn't really see that right uh -huh. and they they talk about all the different ways i've read different books from magicians but one of the the thing that's always been amazing to me is they talk about the eye and how the eye when we see that we're actually seeing upside down right like our brain has to take that information and flip it up the uh, flip it to the correct way okay. um and then that you're also seeing in 2D right so you don't even see in 3D huh. and then another thing they they talk about which blows my mind is they say in any given moment um the amount of focus that you can actually give something is about the size of your thumbnail right really yeah really. like very but like specific focus specific focus like look and even think about when you're looking at somebody right like you could like yeah you can't can even really look at only both see eyes, one right? pupil of your eye yeah <laughs> right? you can't uh -huh. even look at both like you can look at one speaking of that did you know that we always actually look to the right eye of somebody how wild is however that? do you see how i only i'm looking at your left eye it's because yeah. my right eye is jacked up it's like almost blind. it's almost blind actually but anyway you keep that's going. funny but yeah anyway. so so with that said they say um but and that's why it takes us so long as children to be able to 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 be able to live on our own. Right. They say one of the things that your brain is doing is it says so. So basically, 95 percent of everything that you see is your brain's best guess at what it thinks is going on. Best guess. Mm hmm the freak dude isn't that crazy <laughs> wow and that's why we're so easily manipulated um you know they visually. take your attention visually they take your attention put it over here and you see they take watches off of people yeah and people uh, dude, don't I even love, know yeah. right like, 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 they don't those even are know my favorite videos i'm like how did that happen watch them and watch how they communicate and the way they speak to people like they'll take clothing off of people you know and they don't even know what's going on mm. or they can do all these amazing tricks with quarters or make you think it disappeared or went through your hand or these card tricks yeah um but that I mean, we can talk about all the, the different things i've learned from them but just from the eye is amazing to me all that really is having to having to go on in your brain to just give you an image right so then with that said we even know like sound and and light travel at different speeds right sure so then with that vision take into consideration 95 percent of what you're seeing is your brain's best guess sure you're only able to see five percent of it and then you're seeing upside down right uh -huh. and you're seeing in 2d and then sound is coming into your ear at a different speed than the light is but as i'm speaking it doesn't look off to you <laughs> so your brain is this amazing machine that's calculating all that and putting it together. Interesting. And is this why it's so hard to sync sound with uh, like video? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But Without like a marker or whatever. 
Yeah. But just how amazing is, well, is our... So, okay. So the first time you told me this, my thought was like, but light, the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound though. Yeah. Right. So my first initial thought was like, that doesn't make sense that we're not actually seeing something in real time, let's say, because if the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound, I should actually be able to see it before I hear it. Great but typically question. we don't, we hear it first. If you look at like the actual like timestamp of a thing happening, we usually hear it before we see it. But it makes sense though, because it's not that the speed of light, it's that's not the issue. It's your brain, what it's doing to the image. It has and to that's interpret what it. it. That's what takes a long, uh, yeah. longer than the sound. Yeah, your brain has to process it, flip it, Give it a depth, dimension. And give it meaning, actually, too, Give it right? meaning and link it to the dang sound. Interesting, dude. And <laughs> sync it. Sync it all together. Sync well, it. So is this why when we're rolling sometimes, you'll say like, hey, hey, and I want you to practice just like you need to close your close your eyes. Is this why you say that? Like this to is feel why it? I say that. This, that's exactly why I say that. And, and especially with fighters, and as you get better at jujitsu, I'll have you do that more often. Huh. But... I have this theory in sports of, of the zone as well. We've heard that term, the zone. Uh -huh. And this is a whole nother episode as well. Like oh, the, the zone, what the being in the zone really is, is it's when you're reacting to real time. And it's exactly what, and not off of what you're and seeing. And not off Be of what you're seeing. Because if you react off of what you're seeing, it's actually always late. Mm -hmm. Oh, F, dude. And then it brings you back to the <laughs> Wayne, Gretzky, awesome. Wayne Gretzky quote, right? Go where the puck's going to be, not where it well, is. Well, what if it's already there? <laughs> dude, right? Yeah, and so like that would say it's like when, maybe that's like a misnomer then when you say like, hey, focus up. Like actually- Totally wrong thing to Someone do. focusing is actually to their detriment it's because the now detriment. they're like, they're lagging behind mm -hmm. what's happening in real mm -hmm. time. And so if a team goes- and that's why like whoa bro okay so that's maybe why like <laughs> momentum is actually a real thing right mm -hmm. like you know you can feel momentum in a game or yep. a sport or whatever and you can will momentum to change but i do this when i'm playing pickleball actually oddly enough is like i noticed i was just like i could not beat this my my brother i could not beat him at pickleball <laughs> just was like the most infuriating thing ever for me and so i tell myself this lie like i don't really care about pickleball it's just like a freaking woofa ball and a little like a, a, an oversized ping pong paddle like what's the big deal right so over uh, over thanksgiving break i was like I, I don't lose stuff dude so like i'm not gonna lose at pickleball anymore <laughs> so no way. i don't lose things man no so way. i decided that i actually cared about winning again um yeah. as a news flash for everyone and uh but what i realized though is like whenever i would get into a state where i was either almost winning or when i was losing i would find myself wanting to focus too much and instead what i needed to do was i needed to muster like a feeling of determination mm -hmm. and then not care too much about what was visually happening mm-hmm is that absolutely so that's how i like hacked myself i said i need to feel determined and then like as an emotion and then not pay attention to what's physically happening. Absolutely. And, or like visually happening in bro is like, and then every time. And then it yeah. changes the game. And you'll notice as you get better at jujitsu, as you know, as you've rehearsed the, the moves enough, as you've rehearsed the defenses enough, what'll happen is, is once it's in your subconscious, then I can say, shut off your brain, Hayden. And just let let it happen. But it has to be conscious first, though, right? But first, Which is why we're not there yet. Yeah, you're not. All there right, yet. we gotta and end right there, dude. Because <laughs> okay, next time you gotta tell the story about Mark Wahlberg, dude. and magicians. <laughs> hey, done. There's this done. I'm ready for some controversy <laughs> next time, bro. This is the this is the like the clown one, right? Right or the um bad story? <laughs> yeah, I mean the we can absolutely With the football and all that. Yeah, Are you sure you want to tell that? Why not? All right. Hey, I believe in the truth, it, man, and I and I'm I'm, I'm a <laughs> it really happens supporter so, of it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're not the first one to uh, to witness it. I, I imagine. I mean, I can be right. <laughs> I can be, and maybe it's not even all that bad. Perhaps, uh, perhaps it's done that way specifically to not do it to other people. Oh, man. All right. What a hook. All, All right, right, dude. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> <That's a> good... <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching this episode of the Anti-Fragile Podcast, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.